Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the webinar on Explore Business and Investment Opportunities in Hong Kong and Mainland. The webinar has been jointly organized by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council and Invest Hong Kong, along with the Sri Lanka Gem and Jewelry Association. We thank the association for their support and for inviting you to attend this webinar. We have speakers from all the associations today. Uh, before I introduce them, I'll just go over the housekeeping rules for this webinar. The audience will be kept on mute during the course of this webinar. We have a question and answer session at the end of the webinar. So we will be taking your questions at that time. You can type your questions in the Q&A box, but most importantly, uh, please clearly write the name of the person to whom the question is directed to. In order to rep avoid repetition, uh, only relevant questions will be put before the speakers. I will now introduce you to the speakers. We have with us today, Mr. Altaf Iqbal, who is the chairman of Facet Sri Lanka and vice chairman foreign promotions and trade fairs of the Sri Lanka Gem and Jewelry Association. He is the managing director of Regal Gems, a pioneering gemstone company established in 1972 by his father, Mr. A.R.M. Iqbal. Altaf was among the first dealers to source from the sapphire mines in both Tanzania and Madagascar and is forging new paths for the Sri Lankan industry. We have Mr. Rajesh Bhagat, who is a qualified chartered accountant and is appointed as South Asia consultant for the HKTDC. He oversees HKTDC activities across India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and Nepal. From Invest Hong Kong, we have Ms. Angelica Lung, who is the head of consumer products in West Hong Kong, and Ms. Angela Chung, who is the senior manager for consumer products. Mr. Ashish Mehta is a graduate of the Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay, and is the Invest Hong Kong principal consultant based in Mumbai, and he oversees the activities in India and Sri Lanka. Also with us today, we have with us Ms. May Wong from the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. She is the manager of sales in the exhibition department with more than 20 years experience in the exhibition industry. More importantly, she is also the manager in charge of the Hong Kong International Jewelry Show and the Hong Kong Diamond, Gem and Pearl Show. Well, time to move on. I now invite Mr. Iqbal to give his welcome address. Over to you, Mr. Iqbal. Hong Kong. And also a good morning to my colleagues in Mumbai and also members of the Sri Lanka Gem and Jewelry Association in Sri Lanka, and HKTDC booth holders, and fellow colleagues from the gem industry. Uh, I thank the HKTDC for uh, planning this event in coordination with uh, Invest Hong Kong and SLGJ. It's a good opportunity for all of us to meet and plan up our future of action in, in relation to our business and so in relation to the shows to be held in Hong Kong. Just a brief history on uh, Sri Lankan gym industry in Hong Kong. Now, the Sri Lankans came to Hong Kong in the 1960s. Right? and they took part in the early exhibitions in 1985, when they were in Kowloon, two hotels were hosting the exhibitions, namely the Holiday Inn and the Renaissance Hotels. Uh, we Sri Lankans uh, uh, take part in all four major shows in Hong Kong. We started the country pavilion in the early 19, uh, in uh, 2000, and also we joined uh, the HKTDC show as a pavilion in early 2010. Since then, we have grown in numbers and close to 50 booth holders take part in this annual show. So as you know, Hong Kong is a place for business. It's an easy place of business. 
we have been always going there freely, bring our gemstones, no restrictions, no hassle, no red tapes. Uh, ideal place to do gem and jewelry trade. And we have always cherished that uh, opportunity Hong Kong has given us. And we hope that the pol political st stability and the free trade policy uh, will stay the same. So we can still continue uh, doing business in Hong Kong. And as you know, uh, we have gone through a bad patch with COVID. But who says uh, trade has stopped due to COVID? No. During time of crisis, there is opportunities. And I'm sure if you have the right policies placed in Hong Kong, people will come and do business. There are a lot of opportunities there to do business. Of course, God forbid, there are a lot of debts in the industry and outside, right? We pray for them. But at the same time, there are people who want to buy gem and jewelry. A lot of events have been postponed, right? People who want to spend money, who have a reasonable good income, cannot spend. So if, if this shows open up again, I think trade will grow among all of us. As you know, Sri Lanka being a source country, we have a very good traffic at all these four shows. And as you know, we are one of the oldest gem sources countries in the world. So we have positioned ourselves in that way. And I think we can grow in Hong Kong if the right policies are maintained and uh, we have a easy way of coming in there. As you know, with, uh, before 2010, uh, we were given visas on landing, but unfortunately, uh, now we have to have a visa. And that is a tedious process for a Sri Lankan gem dealer because he has to plan his trip two months ahead, two or three months ahead. And uh, that's, a, that's a, a place where the invest Hong Kong can come in and see only the gem dealers whom we, we uh, who take a part in a part in these shows are given uh, multiple visa per year. I think that will make things very easy for them. So I I feel that uh, uh, so responsibility of making things easy for the trade and for the booth holders mm -hmm. lies with HKTTC, and we enjoy Hong Kong and looking forward to coming back to Hong Kong again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Iqbal. Uh, that was a very uh, beautiful bit of history you shared with us. Uh, I now invite uh, Mr. Rajesh Bhagat, uh, the South Asia consultant from the Hong Kong Trade Development Council uh, to make his presentation. Over to you, Mr. Bhagat. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, Mr. Altaf, for those opening remarks and also for uh, your, you know, strong conviction about Hong Kong and HKTDC. I think uh, we at Hong Kong Trade Development Council also try our best to ensure that we are able to connect businesses from all over the world using Hong Kong, you know. So, I'm uh, basically, just to introduce myself, I'm based in Mumbai and I oversee the South Asian markets. And with me today, I have uh, Mei Wong, who is uh, based in Hong Kong at our head office. And she would be pleased to answer any questions that you may have later during the question and answer session. We also have our colleagues from Indian Invest Hong Kong, Angelica Lung, Angela Chung and Ashish Mehta, who would make the presentations uh, shortly afterwards. So I think all of you are quite familiar with Hong Kong Trade Development Council. I don't think I need to really introduce HKTDC to all of you. But for those who have still not you know, come to our fairs or not come to Hong Kong, uh, it's just a short introduction that HKTDC has been set up in 1966 uh, by ordinance to promote international trade through Hong Kong. And to that end, we connect businesses from all over the world 
through our e-marketplace, through our 20 publications and research publications, product magazines, as well as over 35 international trade shows and conferences and summits. Out of which I'm sure you all are very familiar with our diamond, pearl and gem show and also our international jewelry show. But over and above that, we also organize large conferences like the Asian Financial Forum and the Belt and Road Summit, where we actually help uh, project owners to match make with potential investors. So it's a very good uh, platform if you are looking out for investment opportunities. And you know the Asian Financial Forum takes place in January every year, and the Belt and Road Summit in September. So this is over and above the trade fairs that you have been attending. So starting on a positive note, you know, we have been having encouraging signs in the retail sector from the Chinese mainland. While, you know, the global luxury market has actually shrunk by 23%, you know, the Chinese market has almost doubled, doubled from 11% to 20% in 2020. And sales of luxury goods in China has actually gone up by 48% to US dollar 54 billion, because this is largely because international travel has virtually become impossible. And China is expected to account for the largest share of the global uh, luxury market by 2025. So this you know, HKTDC organizes the world's largest jewelry marketplace with our twin shows. One is the Diamond, Gem and Pearl show at the Asia World Expo and the International Jewelry Show at the Hong Kong Convention and Exhibition Center in Wan Chai. So in 2019, we had over 4,600 exhibitors from 48 countries and regions. And in fact, Sri Lanka Pavilion also, I think was one of the largest with 47 exhibitors from Sri Lanka in 2019 at the, at the Diamond, Gem and Pearl show. What makes it really attractive are the number of buyers. If you see 90,000 plus buyers attended from 141 countries and regions, this makes our show a truly international show with large number of buyers coming from Asia and uh, China and followed by Europe, North America, Middle East, Australia, and Pacific Islands, and Latin America. However, due to the pandemic, which is yet continuing uh, in 2021, our shows, which are always held in March, are rescheduled to July 2nd to 6th uh, in 2021. And they are going to be held at the Asia World Expo, both the Diamond Gem and Pearl Show and the International Jewelry Show. However, we will be continuing with our product zoning for the International Jewelry Show also, as well as the Diamond Gem and Pearl Show. And I'm sure you all are quite familiar with our product zoning. One very important uh, departure, or I would say, uh, you know, something which we have worked out to accommodate as many exhibitors as possible is that the basic unit of each booth would be nine square meters, where almost all the exhibitors would be guaranteed at least nine square meters, but you are always welcome to apply for a larger space subject to availability. And the allotment this time for the uh, uh, would be by balloting, but the location in July show would be only on a one-off basis, because as you are aware, this is, uh, you know, all, both the fairs are being held together at the Asia World Expo. And the past exhibitors who have confirmed their booth locations in 2020 would be allowed to retain the same booth size and the locations for the 2022 edition. Another piece of good news is that there has been a subsidy from the Hong Kong uh, SAR government, the Convention and Exhibition Industry Subsidy Scheme. And this is available for both the local as well as overseas exhibitors. So 50% of the participation fee subject to a cap of $1,282 US dollars per booth of nine square meters would be available 
and this is available for only the fairs organized by the Hong Kong Trade Development Council. So as you can see from your original price of 6,050 US dollars after the subsidy, it comes to 4,768 US dollars. So I'm sure this is something which would definitely be of immense benefit to the industry. For the, the pricing accordingly, after the subsidy for the diamond gem and pearl show, for premium uh, B boot type would be 5,283 US dollars, for premium D, 4,898 US dollars, and for the standard boot, 4,768 US dollars. And similarly for the international jewelry show, it, it is more or less same for, I mean, it is same for premium B and the standard booth. And for premium C booth, it is 5,013 US dollar. So, uh, you know, for HKTDC is going to, you know, use all the proper possible channels to maximize your ex exposure through a buyer newsletter, press conferences, official product magazines, and our official website, as well as our HKTDC online marketplace. So we, all the possible channels will be utilized to you know, maximize your exposure as well as to invite buyers. And I would strongly suggest you know, for the Sri Lankan exhibitors to come together and also come out with a special supplement which can be used and which can be distributed by HKTDC to all the premium buyers and be also made available at all the premium locations at uh, our uh, the fairground. So this is something which we have done in the past and I'm sure it will be of immense benefit in the future also. So that's the end of my presentation. These are my coordinates. I will be happy to you know, be in touch with you. And if there is anything that you would like to know, please do send me an email or contact me on these numbers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bhagat, for giving the finer details of the exhibitions for everyone. I now invite uh, Ms. Angelica Lung and Ms. Angela Chung to speak on behalf of Invest Hong Kong. Invest Hong Kong is the department of the Hong Kong SAR government, which provides free advice to companies wishing to set up businesses in Hong Kong. And uh, uh, Angela, who is the head of consumer products, is an inward investment and government relations professional, while, uh, uh, sorry, that was Angelica, while Angela works with overseas and mainland consumer product companies in setting up and helping them to expand their businesses in Hong Kong. So uh, I now turn over to Angelica and Angela, over to you. Good morning, everyone in Sri Lanka. Uh, today, Angela and I will be presenting some of the practical points about setting up a business in Hong Kong. Our presentation today will cover the Hong Kong advantages, Hong Kong as a, a jewelry and gem hub for Asia, uh, Greater Bay Area, which used to be called the Pearl River Delta, and some entry models and how Invest Hong Kong can support you when you do decide to set up a presence in Hong Kong. So I believe many of you have already visited our city. Uh, I just want to reiterate that we are about 5.5 hours from Colombo and we are very well connected onto the mainland for rail, ferry, train, and also high-speed rail into mainland China. And uh, there are some types of uh, quarantine exemption for companies who are already in Hong Kong who need to visit their factories on the mainland. Uh, so at least the government is trying to facilitate as much as possible trade between Hong Kong and the mainland during this COVID period. So again, what is actually a one country, two system as a special administrative region? What does that mean for you as a business? So uh, we put a lot of points here, but I think there's three things to remember in particular. Uh, one is the Hong Kong dollar is pegged to the US dollar and not to the renminbi. Uh, English and Chinese are both official languages in Hong Kong, me meaning many of your contracts 
and your invoicing can be done in English here. And of course, there are no import duties on gemstones or diamonds. And then briefly on our very simple tax structure, for the first $2 million of profit tax, profits, you are only paying 8.25% tax in Hong Kong. And then for profits above 2 million Hong Kong dollars, it is a flat rate of 16.5%. And it's very important to note that there are many types of taxes that we do not have in Hong Kong, uh, which are featured in the no box at the bottom left corner. And of course, Hong Kong is a very good place to be doing international business. As you can see from our latest statistics, we have over 9,000 companies representing parent companies with headquarters overseas. And uh, mainland China is the number one, um, we could still consider them overseas investors into the city. And what they are doing in Hong Kong, many of the times it's capital raising, merger and acquisitions, uh, contract signing, and international business. And then, of course, again, the favorable factors of why they decide uh, to set up in Hong Kong. Uh, we hear uh, uh, safety is one of the safety and the quality of life. It's not written on this slide, but that's something often cited by our um, uh, the investors that we come in. And uh, for the major lines of business, import, export, wholesale, and retail are one of the most popular functions that these overseas companies use to set up in Hong Kong. So I will now pass the time to Angela, who will talk about the jewelry and gem industry in Hong Kong. Hello, good morning, good morning everyone. I would like to share with you the latest development for jewelry industry, just to let you have an understanding about how you could leverage on Hong Kong's uniqueness to run your business here. Based because of Hong Kong's advantage, Hong Kong is a preferred location for a lot of jury and jury related organization to set up their regional office and local offices here. We can see from the cluster of, we can, this clustering can be seen from the presence of international brands such as Graf, Chopard, Harry Winston, et cetera, in Hong Kong. In addition, renowned auction houses and miners such as Christie, Sotheby, Arosa also, they have a local team in Hong Kong to hold auctions for rough and polished diamonds in Hong Kong on a regular basis. Furthermore, major gemological organizations such as Gemological Science International, International and Gemological Institute of America have established offices in Hong Kong to provide grading and reporting services. Hong Kong is the hub of exhibition and events. Hong Kong also hosts many world-class jewelry trade shows every year. For example, the Hong Kong International, International Jewelry Show, which will be held in July by the Hong Kong TDC, and also JMA Hong Kong International Jewelry Show, which will be held in November this year by Jewelry Manufacturers Association. So you can see the clustering has offered excellent collaboration opportunities for jewelry companies um, to explore the opportunities in Hong Kong whether in the B2B or B2C basis. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to show you, this is the trade statistics that we source from International Trade Center, which is the joint agency of World Trade Organization and the United Nations. This center actually provides indicators of import and export performances for individual countries. Hong Kong is among the largest importer of precious or semi-precious stone and precious metal in the world. In 2018, Hong Kong's import value amounted to about 65 billion US dollars. So you can see the market of potential in Hong Kong is sizable. Dig digitalization is, a is influencing um, every aspect of businesses around the world, and that applies to jewelry as well. Hong Kong is a digital hub, digital hub in Asia, and we have seen many jewelry digitalization happening in Hong Kong. For example, Hong Kong-based jewelry retailer Chow Tai Fu Jewelry's group, they started a blockchain platform to track diamonds. They also use a set of unique serial numbers in the making inscribed on each diamond to enable consumer to trace the journey of each stone from sourcing to production to retail sales point. 
another uh, very renowned um, jury group in Hong Kong, Mabel. They have an online channel which include Mabel.com and Fanshare, which is a mobile application platform. The Fanshare app is linked with the brand's Mabel Reward Program and provide members with details on latest events, discount offers, and new arrivals as well. Finally, an incubator from the Hong Kong Science and Technology Park called Asset on Chain, they have launched a blockchain-backed, fully digital trading platform called Evercaret for visibly settled diamond. It matches sellers, buyers across the group to trade diamonds with a transparent and to secure bid and ask price all year round. Besides digitization, Hong Kong's jewelry industry is supported by incubator and specialty school. A design incubation space founded by Chow Tai Fook Jewelry Group called The Loop aims to nurture young jewelry designers and talents with its in-house design residence program, as well as public workshop led by the industry. La Cour School of Jewelry Arches is founded in Paris with the support of Wen Cleef. This school marks its official opening in Hong Kong in 2019, which is its first permanent school outside Paris. The Lacorte School is an education initiative which aims to share its knowledge to a large and varied audience through hands-on a la carte classes taught by a team of passionate per expert talks and exhibition. To cement Hong Kong's role, to cement Hong Kong's role as world's jewelry hub. Hong Kong Jewelry Manufacturers Association has officially opened J Hub in September 2020 with an area of 8,000 square feet, which will be an incubation platform for cultivation, cultivating new generation of jewelry talent, as well as being an accreditation, vocational training, and jewelry branding center in Hong Kong. So taken all together, the clustering and the support to the industry has characterized Hong Kong as a viable and necessary hub for foreign businesses to expand and grow their business in, in Asia. So that's the end of my presentation. I'm now passing the time to Angelica to further explain to you about the advantages of Hong Kong. Thanks, Angela. So um, the Greater Bay Area used to be called the Pearl River Delta PRD is a cluster of nine cities plus two special administrative regions of Hong Kong and Macau. And we're talking about a population of 70 million. So these are uh, pre-COVID times, um, a major source of the visitor arrivals in Hong Kong. And we've actually seen many of them coming to Hong Kong to shop for uh, jewelry products uh, and even for gold products. Uh, so I know many of you are thinking about B2B trading in Hong Kong, but I mean, the B2C uh, opportunities are very strong as well. So how about the connectivity between the, the cities within the Greater Bay Area? So this is a map of the high speed rail. You can see that when uh, in the past, when you had to go to Guangzhou, it took about two hours by uh, normal train. Uh, now you can go to with 48 minutes to Guangzhou South Station. So this high speed rail connects Hong Kong to the major high speed uh, rail network across the mainland. So this is uh, part of the one hour lifestyle circle uh, between cities of the Greater Bay Area. So also I know uh, you don't transport gems in uh, container trucks, but this is one of the cross border fast clearance security system also known as the e-lock. So for those of you perhaps who are buying directly from uh, mainland factories, uh, for example, uh, I, think, I don't know, in garments or furniture or other bulk products. This is a recent uh, initiative between the two governments and there are 52 clearance points across the Guangdong province and cutting down um, uh, the land boundary control points by reducing it up to two hours. So maybe not for gems or jewelry, but definitely for other traders, this is a very convenient um, cross-border e-lock system. Of course, it's wonderful to attend a trade show, but as we all know, trade show happens for a few days across the year. So how about for the other 340 days that there aren't a jewelry trade show? How about thinking about setting up a more permanent establishment in Hong Kong to be 
closer to your clients, having faster customer service and more control of the whole experience. So I would like to talk quickly about four market entry models that companies can consider. The direct entry model means you have total control and more long-term benefits, but of course this will require more time, effort, and investment. Some companies choose to find a distributor uh, to share your risk and maybe benefit from their existing market knowledge, but of course on this hand you are further from the client and your client data does not belong to you. For one of the uh, models that we highly recommend to jewelry and gemstone trading companies is the showroom, which is a B2B uh, setup. Uh, your guests can come by invitation only. And for some commercial buildings, you may also conduct retail sales within your showroom direct to consumers. And finally, as Angela mentioned, there is a high level of digitization of uh, stones and diamonds. So the e-commerce model, perhaps for your more moderately priced items, is also a possibility. There are many uh, ways to sell diamonds online, and it is well accepted by the Asian consumer. This is one of the uh, cost models, the most basic type of cost model. So a uh, admin executive uh, would be about 15,000 Hong Kong dollars. Uh, office facilities in a shared office space, maybe a hot desk, is 2,000 Hong Kong dollars. And then, of course, various professional services. So this would amount to approximately 2,500 US dollars per month for the most basic setup. Uh, this does not include relocating a professional from Sri Lanka. This would be all uh, a local staff and local operations. So in Best Hong Kong, uh, we have uh, our next speaker, Ashish, who is based in Mumbai, who can give you very detailed one-to-one um, -one advice on your setup procedure. And everything we do is, again, free of charge and tailored to your needs. And of course, we have issued a 72-page future of sourcing report. Uh, many of the case studies are there for uh, Garmin and soft goods, but the uh, strategy is equally applicable to jewelry and gem trading. Please contact our colleague Ashish for a PDF version of this report. So that's uh, all from Angela and myself. So I'd like to give the time back to Mitra. Thank you, Angelica and Angela uh, for giving us this information of how to set up business in uh, Hong Kong. Uh, and I'll, I'll invite uh, Mr. Mehta. He is a principal consultant of Invest Hong Kong, overseeing India and Sri Lanka. Uh, so over to you, Mr. Mehta. Okay, all right. Uh, thanks, Angelica. Thanks, Angela. Uh, you know, good morning, everyone. Uh, actually, good afternoon now. Uh, you know, it's an absolute pleasure to connect with so many businesses from the gems and jewelry trade today from Sri Lanka. My name is Ashish and I'm the principal consultant responsible for India and Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka was added to our territory uh, last year, uh, looking at the response from trade. And uh, we have, uh, we could not travel to Sri Lanka last year because of the pandemic but thought we would start with a webinar like this. Uh, and once things are back to normal, we, we will actually make our trips to Sri Lanka to help local businesses from Sri Lanka to set up in Hong Kong. Uh, what are the advantages um, have already been covered by my colleagues, Angelica and Angela. Uh, very quickly on the slide, which is visible on the screen, these are the sectors which we promote for uh, businesses set up in Hong Kong. Uh, for us, gems and jewelry happens to be one of the most important sector and that is the reason why it is in the center uh, and uh, you know, headed by our team uh, back in Hong Kong. Uh, what, are the, uh, what is the experience? So we have actually held a number of businesses from India in the gems and jewelry trade from places like Surat, Jaipur, and of course, Mumbai, where we are located to set up in Hong Kong. Uh, as my colleagues mentioned earlier, all the services provided are absolutely free of cost because Invest Hong Kong is a government department 
looking at helping businesses to set up in Hong Kong. This could be uh, incorporating a business in Hong Kong, which my colleague briefly touched upon the different business models, uh, how to set up an office, and we can actually introduce uh, businesses from Sri Lanka with real estate agents, with co-working spaces and so on and so forth, how to open a bank account, uh, opening of a bank account, recruitment of staff. Uh, Mr. Altaf, you know, at the beginning of his uh, presentation, he spoke about visa or visa related issues. And we've also helped a number of businesses from India uh, to resolve these visa issues. Uh, and we are looking forward to working with more and more Sri Lankan businesses interested in setting up in Hong Kong to work with them also with respect to you know, issues around visas. Of course, it's not something which we have uh, the absolute authority on, but we can provide the right information uh, and make the right connections so that travel for businesses becomes easier. Um, business cost, what is the cost of setting up a business in Hong Kong? Networking opportunities, uh, virtual, and uh, you know, when the trade fairs start and events start happening, both. And many other things, you know, for example, if somebody is relocating from Sri Lanka to Hong Kong and they would want to understand the schooling available for their kids, you know, we even go to that level to provide information. We obviously encourage visits to Hong Kong and participation in trade fairs and exhibitions every year. Of course, you know, with the pandemic uh, that has been impacted, but, you know, as uh, my previous presenters have spoken about, you know, the plans from July onwards. Uh, we are planning to meet uh, Sri Lankan gems and jewelry companies and provide them information and assistance in setting up, setting up a business in Hong Kong. What I would also do is towards the end of this presentation, I will share my contact details and contact details of my colleague Charlie uh, so that businesses interested can reach out to us and we would be setting up one-to-one -one discussions with them later on. Uh, we are located in Mumbai. Uh, but we are very happy to connect on email, on phone calls, on virtual meetings like this and discuss your plans for setting up a business in Hong Kong and provide information with respect to your questions of doing business with Hong Kong. We are looking at setting up these one-to-one -one discussions in the month of March and April uh, in 2021. Uh, these would be virtual meetings and when the travel gets back to normal, we will uh, travel to, to Sri Lanka. Uh, we are also planning another webinar uh, in March of 2021, next month, which would be open to all exporters from Sri Lanka and any companies from this webinar interested in joining it, uh, please you know, contact us. To also follow us on our social media channels, uh, especially LinkedIn, for getting regular updates on events, activities, policy announcements, which are happening uh, in Hong Kong and our website which is invest hong kong which is the, on the slide is very very valuable uh, you know in terms of information available there all our services as mentioned earlier are comprehensive confidential and complementary uh, this is uh, the worldwide network of our offices the reason why i'm showing this slide is it actually talks about how important are international businesses for hong kong and how important are international businesses for hong kong government we want more and more international businesses to set up in Hong Kong so that Hong Kong remains a truly global city for international businesses. Last, uh, these are my contact details and contact details of my colleague, Charlie, uh, who's also on this uh, you know, uh, presentation today. Uh, and we cover Sri Lanka, we cover India, and we also cover Maldives. Uh, do feel free to contact us. We will be your first point of contact for all information, queries, and once, uh, you know, if there are any specific questions where we need to get our colleagues from headquarters, Angelica and Angela involved, we would be happy to involve them as well. Thank you so much. Looking forward to connecting with you again for one-to-one -one discussions later in the month of March and April. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mehta. Uh, I'm sure there will be a lot of people who will be willing to connect uh, in the future. Uh, as uh, we have seen, we have received some very informative presentations today, uh, which I'm sure will be very useful to everybody. 
Uh, we now go into the Q&A session. Uh, just a gentle reminder, this is a 15 minute uh, session and whoever wants to send the questions, please do send the questions across. Uh, please clarify to whom this question is directed to. So it will be easier for everybody to uh, get the right questions to the right person. Uh, Mr. Alta Iqbal is conducting this uh, Q&A session. So I uh, now hand over to Mr. Iqbal. Mr. Iqbal, over to you. Hi, hi. Thank you very much all presenters uh, for their very informative presentations. Uh, I hope the Sri Lankan businesses connected to this webinar have learned a lot and looking forward to connect with Invest Hong Kong as well as uh, looking forward for the HKDTC July show. Uh, the questions are coming, uh, I just, my colleagues are writing down, but I just want to have one question has been sent to me by uh, this question to Mr. Rajesh. Uh, I'm very thankful for the discount offered for the booth, but I would like to know whether we will be refunded if we are to go for a smaller booth that gives us credit balance with the HKTDC. Rajesh? Yeah. Uh, would May like to take up this question? May? May, you are on mute. Okay. Thank you for the questions. Um, we assure our exhibitors uh, the, uh, the refund of the participation fee if they uh, eventually would take a smaller booth or if there's any change in the schedule of the fair or further postponement or cancellation, we assure uh, you, have, uh, you have the opportunity um, to, to, to choose a full refund. Okay. Uh, as Mr. Bhagat mentioned, the luxury market has doubled in the mainland China amidst the pandemic. What are the statistics Hong Kong has shown for the same period? I think uh, uh, in West Hong Kong, somebody can uh, address that uh, question. Probably, I think uh, this is something which we would probably need to compile and send it to you. So if you can send or if you can send us the question by email, then we will, you know, offline send it, uh, send the reply. Okay, right. Now, as you know, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we had a meeting among the booth holders in, uh, in Sri Lanka of, of all the HKDC booth holders. And all of us in one voice agreed that we won't uh, take our deposit because we believe, we trust because we had long-term relations with HKTDC and we held, we gave the deposit to you all to continue. Some, I think most 80% have paid full payment to the booths, right? Mm -hmm. So right. as you know that we trust and believe that we have a long-term relation with HKTDC and also HKTDC helped us in promoting our industry, giving a, a very prominent location in our pavilion, uh, pavilion locations. Uh, I hope that we can continue with the same location in case we are continuing the July show. Uh, May, can I can you answer that? Okay, I think uh, for the uh, location arrangement, uh, uh, it may it may not be exactly the same because uh, we are putting two shows uh, at the same time in the Asia Well Expo. So uh, for the whole allocation, it will be totally different from the March edition. But I uh, can uh, promise uh, to the Sri Lanka Jewelry Association that if you would come back to the July show with a sizable delegation, we would definitely consider to offer a, a, a good location for, for the country pavilion. Yeah, but as you know, repeatedly we tell, we are the corner shop in the, in the pavilion, like, you know, because everybody mm. knows they're right at the corner, all our customers mm. bought mm. us. In and you can every year you can see the traffic there. Mm. It's something different. Right? Yes, so we will take into consideration of that. But yeah. since the, the whole conflict uh, for the whole allocation is totally different. So that's yeah. why the, uh, the the booth location for Hong Kong exhibitors or for the overseas exhibitors will definitely be totally different. Okay. Only for this year. Am I yes, right? for, for July only. For July only. 
Okay. I think for I think for March 2022, I think uh, you know we will try to retain as I mentioned the original locations and everything. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So there is another factor here, since we are we still we are playing COVID is in our shadow and you know it's shadowing us everywhere we go every week there are updates closures. So how about now when you are going to do the July show, and suddenly something unexpected. Happens like the airport in Sri Lanka is locked down, or we have another quarantine issue here, right? Can you all sure the booth holders were already invested on their tickets or the travel plans, made the hotel bookings, you know, they are done their, they are shipped their parcels. So, is there a plan where you can ship, ensure the booth holder in any way because these are. These are trying times. You know, 40% of our members are completely closed their businesses, right? It's a very difficult period for all of us, right? But still we want to come because we see Hong Kong as a marketplace where the whole globe meets, right? Mm -hmm. Because of the easy uh, way we have planned yourself, your policies, you know, the way you are located your shows, you know, the way you promote your shows. We are very encouraged by that. So is there any way you can ensure the booth holders if something unexpected happens? Uh, now, first of all, I think uh, it would be difficult for us to compensate the exhibitors for the traveling fee or the, for the booking of the air ticket the hotel. But we will keep on observing the situation and let the exhibitors know of the decision whether to continue to go on the show or to cancel it or to postpone it at least six weeks before the commencement of the show. So we will also take into consideration of many factors, including the accessibility of the travelers, travel restrictions around the world, and also the travel restrictions in Hong Kong. So uh, we would uh, try our very best to keep our exhibitors informed as, as early as possible. So that's why there are so many uncertainty uh, for the July edition. So that's why this time we asked all the exhibitors to use the standard booth package, uh, which is uh, constructed by the HKDDC so that we can have um, our own contractors to ensure that if the show will go on and then to make sure that you will be able to come, otherwise you will, otherwise you, you will not uh, incur any uh, contractor's charges. Uh, for example, like uh, some country pavilions, they usually hire external contractors to build their stands. But once the show is canceled or postponed, then they still have to pay for the outside contractors. So that's why for this time, because it is a very special edition, so we keep all the contractors work by ourselves. So in case if there's any changes in the, in the fair schedule or any postponement or cancellation, so you don't have to bear additional charges. But of course, the exhibitors, they still have to bear uh, their own risk for, I mean, paying the, the air ticket or the hotel accommodation. So uh, we would um, try to let them know um, as early as possible, but anyway. Thank you. Thank you, May. Uh, Angelica, it's a question to you. Uh, you see, already some of our members have offices in Hong Kong, right? And as you know, the gem houses, the, the employment, it's, a, it's kind of a very personal business. So they might employ one or two Hong Kong uh, citizens. So what is the criteria for a small to medium-sized business if they want to shift to Hong Kong or start the operations? Uh, what is the uh, immediate criteria and how long will it take to establish a business in Hong Kong for a medium or a small scale business? Yes, thank you very much for your question. So there's a few things that uh, a company will need. There will be a business registration, there will be bank accounts, and there will be a, a visa application because usually at least uh, the headquarters will want to send uh, one or two staff to set up the operations, uh, usually as um, one of the key shareholders or one of the experienced staff will come to Hong Kong. So the business registration part is very easy. Uh, there are many service providers, uh, corporate secretary, accounting houses, 
uh, which can do this part for you. So when you have the business registration, then of course it is to set up the bank account. And this may take a little bit longer because the bank account will want to know who your shareholders are and also um, the, that you will have a substantial business in Hong Kong. It is not a shell company. So it's usually very difficult for shell companies to get an account. And for the visa application, we usually, um, as they will send maybe a senior manager or one of the uh, business owners, uh, we can start this process uh, concurrently with the business registration. So these are the top three uh, aspects of that companies need to start when they decide to set up in Hong Kong. All the other points about uh, finding a location or hiring locally in Hong Kong, that's very easy. And uh, for limited company, limited company structure, which is the most common structure, uh, you will be required to do a annual audit. So um, the, the key point is usually the bank account uh, and the visa applications. Thank you. Uh, uh, Rajesh, a question to you. Uh, you see now the SLGG is working with HKDC for a long time now more than 12 years, 12 to 15 years. We are promoting all your events, all your shows. Is there any way uh, you could uh, come into an agreement with SLGJ to promote our only show in Sri Lanka facets? Is there any way you can help us in this? Because it's a very small show, as you know, and uh, it's a source uh, show. Is there any way we can come to an understanding, any opportunities where we can promote your events and you all can promote one of our events. So I think, uh, you know, Ruzbe from my office has also attended uh, the facet show, I think on several occasions. And uh, we will also, I, I'm, I'm quite sure that, you know, we can put it up to our Hong Kong head office colleagues to see how we can do, you know, some sort of a promotion. Uh, maybe something which probably, uh, we, we, we normally, what we do is we have not had this uh, sort of uh, uh, practice of promoting uh, shows on our platforms, you know. So that is something it's not, whether it's facets or with the, it's not, uh, not with the Sri Lanka Gem and Jewelry Association. I think this is something as a practice we do with most organizations in the world. Because, you know, while we are so uh, caught, uh, tied up with uh, organizing our own show, you know, we have not had this practice of uh, sort of promoting other shows at our platforms. But maybe we could, uh, you know, uh, uh, discuss with uh, our colleagues in head office and see in whatever format which we could accommodate, you know, uh, the facet show. Uh, May would like to, you know, uh, Elaborate on this. At least, at least the Sri Lankan gem and jewel industry. At least, if you can promote that to the world through your right. platforms, will actually, be able to... actually, you know, one way as I mentioned earlier, that you know, and during this our fair, we also, you know, uh, if you remember, we had done something like that in the past, where we had come out with a special supplement on Sri Lanka gem industry, and all the exhibitors, some of the exhibitors also put up their own profile and uh, advertisement in that special supplement. Now, in that special supplement, I think you could even promote your facets. And that is something we would be able to, you know, distribute in the in the venue itself during the exhibition. So that is something which we, I think, would be a good platform or a good way to promote facets. Okay. Thank Any you. other ideas, May, to... Maybe you can talk with the colleagues from the MTI, the merchandise trade, to right. see uh, we, whether they can also solicit interest from the local associations uh, to see whether there are Hong Kong companies interested in uh, joining or visiting the show in Sri Lanka. Yes, yes, that's a good. So we can do that. We can do that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So. Um, uh... I see uh, that uh, I, I hope that we, we got a good turnout. More than 100 people have attended this uh, webinar and uh, I appreciate the uh, HKDC staff uh, and also our SLGJ staff, uh, Surupa from HKDC and uh, Roshan and Riflam from SLGJ to 
work hard and connect all these people together on this platform. So uh, on my closing remark, I have to say that Hong Kong, again, I remind all of us who are attending, is a special place for us, for the, our gem trade and for our jewelry trade. And uh, especially working with an organization like HKTDC is safe for us, uh, since it's semi-government. And also, uh, Invest Hong Kong has come in to promote Hong Kong. I think we will make use of the opportunity you all have given us. And I, I hope you all be a little flexible this time in accommodating certain requests of ours. So it's a difficult time. We have to work together to move forward. But the opportunities are there. The Clement, as you gave the numbers, uh, Rajesh, in uh, mainland China, the numbers look good. So I think there's a lot of potential, right? And Hong Kong, I hope the status quo stays with the free port and easy to do business. That's very important. And stability of Hong Kong is very important for all of us. We enjoy and, you know, after so many years, 25, 30 years, that we have missed at least we uh, visit average four to five times to Hong Kong, most of our dealers. But this is after so many years, we have not visited uh, for so long. We miss the food, the cruising and the shopping there. You know, like we have a routine there. It's really nice, you know, we go to Kowloon and do our, all our shopping. So it's a nice experience. Hong Kong is a special place for all of us. And I hope it stays vibrant and, you know, and, and wish them very best. So, uh, thank you very much. The recording of this session will be available, I think, on uh, HKDC platforms and uh, uh, Hong Kong, Invest Hong Kong, and also on the SLGGFE page. So I hope we can upload the recordings so people who have missed can see, uh, view it later. You know, I want to end this uh, session with a nice quote from In Color magazine editor. He did, uh, we had an issue uh, last, uh, during the peak of COVID. And he says, with all this uh, uncertainty, one thing that would not change, how is that color will always be in life and life will always be in color. So I think we have a great future ahead and we have to work together, connect people together and see how we can all pull all our membership here, all our booth holders here uh, to come up outside, go out and sell their goods and services. So thank you very much again. I thank everyone who attended, especially my colleagues from Sri Lanka who are attended in numbers. I hope this webinar would have been helpful to them and looking forward to Hong Kong uh, in 2021, July. But I only want to say to me that uh, make sure all the arrangements are done in advance because still uh, we have a, a you know, a, uh, issue here in Sri Lanka due to COVID with the new variant. I don't know the situation in Hong Kong now. How is it? Uh, can you just update the present situation in Hong Kong, Rajesh, or anybody in the panel? What's the present status quo of Hong Kong as per COVID? So uh, I, in fact, yes, Rajesh. No, no, May, please go ahead. Oh, uh, in fact, the epidemic situation in Hong Kong is improving. And uh, we are uh, relaxing some of the um, social distancing rules in uh, recent days. So maybe maybe um, government uh, invest Hong Kong can supplement on this. Yeah, I, yeah, but, I, yeah. Um, uh, for basically we've had uh, business as usual. Uh, previously, government was uh, uh, A B shift. Uh, working from home, but the office was still open. We're still answering questions. Uh, today, we're having uh, four people per table for dinner, and uh, we've been having a lot of uh, testing. We've also have an app that um, you know does uh, um, what, what do you call it? Those uh, QR, code. QR code that yeah. you want a restaurant, you just uh, you know snap the thing. But I think uh, from what we hear. Uh, compared to a lot of locations, Hong Kong's been operating very much as usual. And I, I think it also helps that uh, Hong Kong has 
been through a pandemic before, about 10 years ago, we, we have a lot of um, mask culture, hand sanitizer. So if you have any Ayurvedic hand sanitizer companies thinking about Hong Kong, definitely a uh, very good business here. And um, we were talking with a lot of uh, mask and personal care companies as well. So actually from our team, we cover diamonds to diapers. So do reach out to other Sri Lankan companies uh, uh, in addition to the jewelry and gem trade. Uh, but, you know, we, Angela works with a lot of the Indian community who's already here. I think they've been doing very well. And, um, you know, by having a local team here, they've been very much responsive and could interact with their customers. And, you know, also their businesses have been operating as usual. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so Rajesh, Angela, and uh, then Angelika, Ashish, and May. Thank you very much. Thank and you. for moderating. And looking forward to see you, all of you guys in Hong Kong. And wish all good health and good life in the future. Thanks. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Same to you. Thank you, Mr. Altaf. In fact, I know I was telling May yesterday that Mr. Altaf is a good ambassador, brand ambassador for Hong Kong. Yes. And for HKTDC. And of course, now Invest Hong Kong also. So thank you very much, Mr. Altaf. And thank you, everybody, for attending today's webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Yeah. OK. How are you doing?